I've been streaming on Twitch for the last couple of months, and uh, I wanted to make my streams look a lot more legit and a lot more professional. I thought I considered paying somebody on Fiverr or Own.TV or whatever uh, to make animated overlays and animated effects and stuff like that. Um, but I figured it'd be a lot better if I just learned how to do it myself. So I'm going to share some of the stuff that I've learned over the past couple weeks. Real easy stuff to make uh, your streams or your video production just easier and better altogether. Today we're going to be working on something very similar to this right here, um, but specifically for YouTube videos uh, so that I can add in a small little overlay on the videos that I'm making that direct people to my Switch website. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So here we have Apple Motion. It's a pretty inexpensive animation software. We're going to set up our brand new session here by going to blank motion project broadcast HD 60 FPS and it'll be 10 seconds long. And again, this is going to be like a stab transition at the bottom. First thing we want to do, I always like to back it out so I can see my entire canvas. Uh, the first few times that I did this, I ended up animating something in the middle of the screen as opposed to just on the bottom where we want it. I'm going to start, you can use any shape really, but I'm going to start out with a rectangle. Right here at the bottom center, you can choose rectangle, circle, line, you can make all kinds of different shapes. Rectangle is the simplest to show though. If you grab it with the pointer tool, you can lock it to the bottom of the canvas and the center of the canvas, which is what we want to do for this particular project. Now I want to make this Twitch purple so that it's immediately recognizable. I went to Twitch and I made a screenshot of their logo. And I'll put it just right there. You can see how tiny it is. We're going to make it bigger. This is strictly for the color that we want to use on our rectangle. So we go over to here and we click the rectangle option. If we go up to inspector, you can see that it's filled with a white color. If I click outline, it would outline it with a, a white border, but we don't want that. So this eyedropper right next to the color, white, if we click that and bring it over to the Twitch icon right in the middle of the screen here, bam, that'll turn our rectangle Twitch purple. And now we no longer need this logo. So I've deleted that and now I want to put my text in. Right next to where the rectangle was, bottom center, there's a T. Click the T and then type whatever you want to say. Which in today's situation is twitch.tv slash I suck drums. Now we want to go back down to our arrow tool, hold shift to maintain its portions. Uh, that's a little, that's pretty good. I'm going to slightly off center it to the right because I've also made little tiny white versions of uh, social media logos. This is very simple to do in preview. You guys hear my dog? He doesn't like the UPS guy, so I'm guessing that's who's here. Anyway, uh, we want to do the same thing with this Twitch logo right here. Hold shift, bring it down to an acceptable size. That's a little too big. Keep going down a little bit more. Move it over a little bit. That might still be a little too bad. There we have it. A very simple purple box with white text in it. Now we've got all of this under one group, which is pretty good. That's cool. That's what we want. I'm gonna rename the I'm gonna rename the group purple bar. And now we're going to animate it. So I want it to pop on screen for one second, stay there for eight, and then leave a second into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the playhead over to second number one right here. Click our purple bar group and go over to properties. Here we'll find everything that has to do with this purple bar. Where it says position under the transform headline. I'm going to click this little yellow button. Oh, I came to make a visit. I think he wants to help me now. 
All right, where were we? So we just slid our playhead over to the one second mark. Over here, properties, transform, under the purple bar group. Where it says position, X, Y, and then to the right, there's a little white diamond. We're gonna click that, it's gonna turn yellow. That just made a keyframe, meaning this purple bar wants to be in this position at the one second mark, which is pretty cool. So now we're gonna back it up to the zero second mark. We're gonna pull this straight down off screen, making sure we keep it in center. So now it's off screen. As you can see, it's made itself a new keyframe at the zero mark because it wants to be off screen. So if we've done this correctly, I should be able to hit spacebar and we should be able to see the transition from these two keyframes. Perfect, look at that. So now it's gonna sit here for eight seconds total so that at the nine second mark, go back a couple frames here, we wanna make another keyframe and then at the very end, at the 10 second, we're gonna pull it back off screen again. So now the entire animation has it coming up from the bottom. It'll stay here for eight seconds total, and then it'll disappear, which is pretty awesome. This is especially cool um, when you can map it uh, as a scene source in OBS, which I'll show you guys how to do in just a second. So equally important as to getting those keyframes timed how you want it, um, is how you're going to export this video to maintain the transparency. So I do Apple ProRes 444 with short little transitions like this. They usually end up being about 30 megabytes and uh, my MacBook Pro can handle that just fine in OBS. I don't run out of RAM or anything like that. So I'll show you guys how to set that up uh, right now. But at the top right here, there's a little button that says share. You can also get to this menu, file, share, and we want to go export movie. So here I'm going to call it Twitch pop-up. You go into your settings. This is the, these are the settings that I use. Apple ProRes 444. It's not going to lose any kind of quality compression or anything like that. And this is where the important part is. Color plus alpha. Alpha layer basically tells it that anything that we didn't draw on is transparent. Um, which is what we want. It says 834 megabytes, it's not going to be that big. So I'm going to hit export right now. Save it in my alerts folder. And I don't really like watching it in QuickTime Player. It pops up afterward, but I prefer to do it from preview, where you, I could just select the file. Here you can see the file isn't anywhere near 800 megabytes, it's 100 megabytes. But if I select this, and the background of the window that pops up is like, cl like clearish, then I know the transparency works, which is what we want. So I just select that and hit spacebar, and there we go. And you can see how it's kind of like faded and clear in the background. If you watch this in QuickTime Player, it's just a black background, and I've made the mistake too many times to not share it with you guys, that that will not show up transparent. So those are the settings that you need to use, and I'll show you how to put it into OBS right now, and then uh, you can trigger it however you want. I have a stream deck myself. Um, I think you could set it to a hotkey. I'm not sure how to do that, but uh, I'll show you how to do this in OBS right now. All right, so this looks so crazy because it's a, actually a display capture of the screen that I'm using, but it should be should be fine nonetheless. So here I'm going to go. I've got my scenes and my sources, and what we want to do is add a source on our current screen here. So we go to plus for add. We're going to go to media source. I'm going to call this one Twitch Pop-Up, just like that. Twitch Pop-Up right there. I don't want it to loop, and I do want it to restart playback when it becomes active, because I'm actually going to set it up to toggle, or this little eye. Very cool. So I'm going to set that up on my end, and then I'll show you the finished result. Cool, so as you can see, I have the Twitch pop-up. Let me switch screens here. Twitch pop-up is set to off right now, so the little eye is grayed out. Um, I've mapped this uh, source visibility toggle to a button on my Stream Deck. So now when I hit this button, 
it'll pop right up, it'll hang out for 8 seconds just like we designed, and then eventually it'll go away and hide itself, which is pretty cool. So that's it. I've put it in multiple scenes, and now all I have to do is hit the button and it'll pop right up, which is awesome. So I hope that helped you guys out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to check me out on social media. I suck drums pretty much everywhere. Stream on Twitch three nights a week, and now I'm doing a, uh, a Sunday stream as well for those of you in Europe. Yeah, thanks for stopping by.